Hello guys and welcome to Vlogging Project. Today we're going to have a look at the Panasonic Eluga Tap, a nice little phone costing about 8,000 rupees, which equals to about 90 pounds here in the UK. And boy, the only thing I can say, we need more phones imported like this. So is it worth your money and is it any good? Let's find out. So before we do the unboxing, let's get the specifications out of the way quickly. We're dealing with 5 inch 720p IPS LCD screen, Android 6 Marshmallow without any updates, unfortunately, quad core MTK processor, 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigabytes of storage with micro SD card support up to 32 gigabytes, 8 megapixel rear camera, 5 megapixel front selfie cam, 2800 mAh of battery, fingerprint sensor, 4G connectivity as well, but mind you, if you live in Europe, you're gonna have a problem with the 4G simply because the supported frequencies are B3, B5 and B40 which basically lacks B7 and B20 which means no 4G especially in the UK unfortunately. So overall I would say pretty good specs for a device that cheap and now let's have a look at the box and the box definitely feels more expensive than many other boxes that I've unboxed already because phones of this price range usually come in a box like that. So I'm happy that Panasonic, you know, worked hard into putting a nice box out there for you guys. So what we see at the front of the box, fingerprint scanner, Android 6 and Android 4 work. Okay, so <laughs> let's see what do we have here. There's the phone, I got the golden color as well. There is a silver color option and basically that's about it. So inside the box, we've got a screen protector, we've got some warranty cards. We've got some cheap headphones, USB cable, that's our charging brick, unfortunately that's not the original one because I bought the phone second hand. And some quick start guide and basically that's about it. The first thing you're gonna notice when you get this phone is how well it was put together. The build quality is excellent although the back cover is made of plastic, it still feels very nice and premium and the hand as well as the way it reflects light is absolutely amazing guys. So at the back we've got our 8 megapixel camera, dual tone flash, the Panasonic and Eluga logos over here and that's our speaker here and this thing you can use it to piss off your colleagues all day long. Moving on to the front of the phone, we've got our nice Panasonic logo here, we've got our notification LED, 5 megapixel camera, there's the speaker grill over here, and at the bottom we've got our fingerprint reader. On the sides we've got the power button and volume rockers over here, and check this out. You can scratch this one as well. At the top we've got our 3.5mm jack, on the left side we've got nothing and on the back we've got the microphone and micro USB charging port. And the back of the phone looks like it doesn't open but it does fortunately. So when we open this up it reveals our first and second SIM slots as well as the micro SD card slot. The battery of the phone is rather large at 2800 mAh but unfortunately it's not removable although I can definitely see the screws over here so if you want to replace it you can definitely do that. Size wise let's quickly compare it to another 5 inch phone which is the Blackberry Leap and as you can see over here it's a little bit less narrow and it's a little bit shorter as well. So overall build and in hand feel I'm definitely feeling that the buttons are on the right place and the fingerprint reader is pretty convenient in the front as well. So moving on to the fingerprint reader itself, it's not very fast but at least it's quite accurate and if you don't want to you don't have to press the button to unlock your screen. Check this out guys, it takes a good second to recognize your fingerprint, but at least it's reliable and it works 100% of the time. However, I've noticed that if you press the button, it unlocks a little bit quicker, so basically it's up to you. Now let's have a look at the screen guys, 5 inches 720p, it doesn't sound very impressive on paper, but let me tell you that that's one of the best 720p screens that I have ever seen in my life, simply because it's quite saturated, Check the red levels over here, they pop like an AMOLED screen, of course the blacks are not that deep but for an IPS screen the IPS glow and everything else and the contrast as well is pretty good. Mirror vision is always welcome because you can tweak everything about the screen basically to your liking. From the picture mode to contrast, saturation, sharpness, color temperature, dynamic contrast and everything else. Let's see a couple of wallpapers guys. 
yeah the screen definitely looks quite decent yeah and the best thing about this screen is the maximum brightness check this out guys at the moment i'm having like 25 percent of maximum brightness if you crank it all the way up the display becomes one of the brightest screens i have seen and that's a definitely a go especially when you go outdoors and there's bright sunlight so the screen's overall quality is definitely thumbs up because at 5 inches you don't actually need 1080p screen because it's gonna affect the performance and so on. Speaking about performance, I'm not a benchmark junkie, but I always power up Basemark just to see what kind of results should I expect. And at the moment, what Basemark is telling us is that the system, which is basically the Android skin, is going to be quite light. The memory is kind of low, which means that applications takes quite a lot of time to install, especially the bigger games. And it tells us that the gaming performance is going to be crap. And unfortunately, that's kind of true. I usually check Epic Citadel just to tell me what kind of gaming performance should I expect and I'm getting 27.8 FPS which is not unplayable but just forget about heavy games. Check this out, when I press the button let's say left it takes a good one second for the car to move which is pretty bad on this occasion and it's definitely annoying to play your game like that. And let's see what's gonna happen at the end of the level, check this out. This is an enormous amount of lag guys, which is definitely not nice. You press the button, nothing happens, you gotta wait. It's just a not a pleasant overall experience, unfortunately. So gaming performance definitely gets my thumbs down. Now let's talk about software a little bit. I really like the ability to swap the recents with the back button over here, depending on your liking, as well as you can use the fingerprint reader when you tap it once, it goes back to whatever you were doing previously and when you press it once, it goes home. When you hold it like that, it launches the Google Assistant, which is a very nice thing to see, especially for phones in this price range. But I could have wished that they got rid of these uh, software buttons altogether and they've introduced a long press for the reasons, but it is what it is. Now browsing through your phone definitely feels snappy as well as going back to settings it feels okay there is no luck whatsoever it runs very nicely and smoothly but to be honest with you when it starts opening up applications like Chrome it takes a little bit of time to load once it's loaded yeah it's a little bit more luck free and it's nice to browse but to be honest with you I mean check this out it takes a little bit of time to open up applications but at the end of the day what could you expect from a quite core 1.2 gigahertz of processor as well as the ram management is not very good as well i mean you've got just two gigs of ram so activities are not going to be kept in the background for long but for general usage i would say that it's okay what is not okay though is about the updates i usually don't mind if a phone works perfectly well of the version it supports at the moment to have no updates but in this occasion check this out the android security patch level is from september 5th 2016 basically from when the phone was released and it's running the same android 6.0 version which is basically outdated one year old and which means that you got totally no updates whatsoever it's not that there are many bugs in this phone but you know general lack improvements are always welcome as well as i've noticed a bug where when you swipe from the top to reveal your shortcuts it doesn't always work so check this out you swipe like that and it doesn't work so you have to make sure you nicely put your pin finger over here and swap like that, which could be ironed in an update, but unfortunately no updates whatsoever. Now, when it comes down to bloatware, you've got just a few applications which could be considered as bloatware. Let me know in the comments down below, guys, if you ever use these applications, Amazon Shopping, of course, you're using that. So Daily Hunt, I've never heard about this application as well as let me check a motocross game pre-installed there's no need for that news republic as well as southern i don't know is it, is it a regional application or what true color and zender basically that's about it oh as well as uc browser i haven't used uc browser for years to be honest with you but it was nice that it come back to me in this moment simply because check this out when you play a video 
let's say we're gonna play this video over here you actually have the ability to press download button and save your video to watch it online which is quite nice as well as when you go to add-ons you're having a built-in ad block which is definitely a go for me so you see browser thumbs up and the good thing is that the other applications that i've mentioned like zen the true color this and that you can actually uninstall them so it is not a problem overall stock android gets my approval now let's talk about the sound a little bit yes we've got a 3.5 millimeter jack over here but unfortunately the sound coming out of it is not very good and especially if you've got headphones like that is definitely not loud enough to drive them so i would say the overall quality as well as the volume is a little bit below average unfortunately and I can't say I'm very happy with the volume of the speaker as well. First of all, because of the positioning of the speaker. And second of all, because check this out. When you put the phone flat like that on a table, it gets completely muted. Simply because they kind of forgot to put a little bit of small ridges over here. Like the BlackBerry, check this out. It has a speaker, but at least you've got a couple of you know ridges so when you place the, f the phone like that it doesn't get muted but over here it gets muted very easily so overall the quality of the speaker is definitely not good guys and when you play something and you're in a loud environment you're gonna struggle to hear what's going on so let me show you what i'm talking about check this out guys that's maximum volume which is definitely not enough and see what's happening if you put the phone flat down you can't hear anything so the only thing you can do to improve the overall volume a little bit is to load up this application called volume booster by good dev it's a very simple application guys but be careful when you play around with it because your speaker might distort quite a bit so the best thing you can do give it a boost of 20 percent and actually the boost that you're getting is way louder than that check this out with the application installed with the same song See, it's way louder and now it is acceptable to listen to your things in louder environments. So what about recharge time guys? As I told you, I bought the phone second hand so I don't have the original charger. But I think that if the phone supported quick charging, it could have charged faster. Simply because I tried to charge it with a fast universal charger. And let's check this out what kind of times am I getting half an hour is good for only 19 percent one hour 36 percent then two hours 72 percent and three hours 16 minutes i got a hundred percent so it's a little bit over three hours which is not very good but it's not very bad as well i would say it's okay and now what about the battery life without the 4g bands here in the uk of course i'm getting a battery drain simply because the phone is constantly trying to search for a better network so apart from this a little bit of battery drain on the network i'm getting four hours 20 minutes four hours seven minutes four hours eight minutes and four hours 34 minutes very consistent battery life guys when it's above four hours i'm definitely happy with the battery life because i know my usage not a lot of phones can actually do that with my usage and i'm overall happy apart from the battery drain from the network that i'm personally getting the other battery drain that i've noticed is the wi-fi drain as well as the gps drain so basically if you're not using your wi-fi if you're not using your gps just stop them because they're causing a battery drain and that's one of the things that i could have wished that they've ironed out in a future update but again unfortunately no updates now moving on to the camera let's check the front selfie cam first it's only five megapixels i wasn't you know expecting miracles from that camera and it's kind of the case i mean it's not excellent but it definitely gets the job done especially if you don't zoom in the photo and you just upload it to the social media your photos are going to look nice like that that's another photo of my beautiful self over here check this out once you start to zoom in then you realize that is not much of a details going on but for five megapixel i would say it's okay 
And that's I think the best selfie that I've done guys. There is no sunlight and that's where this camera shines. In more kind of balanced environment, you're getting plenty of detail of this camera and I'm really, really happy about the results. So front facing camera, definitely thumbs up. So now let's have a look at the rear facing camera and I'm gonna tell you what my impressions are after the slideshow. Enjoy. So that was the rear camera guys for 8 megapixel. I would say the camera is good. You gotta play around with the HDR a little bit because not in every scenario is gonna give you a better results, but that might be your personal preference as well. So overall rear camera, I would say that actually it exceeded my expectations, especially in this price range. Now let's see if it's any good for videos. Hello guys and welcome to Vlogging Project. Today we're gonna test the video capabilities of the Panasonic Eluga DAP. I saw in the options electronic image stabilization and I've clicked that button. So let's see what the results are. I'm gonna shake it up a little bit like that, a little bit like that. Do a quick run like that. And yeah, let's just check the surroundings. What do we have? Yeah, it doesn't look too bad though. Let's see. Oh, uh, one more thing. Let's check the autofocus. No? I don't think that there's any autofocus. Anyway. So as you saw the video is a little bit shaky despite the stabilization on as well as the overall quality and dynamic range is not very good. It's only 3GP video, no MP4 on MKV formats, uh, but at least you know the audio was fine. So I would say video, hmm, not very good unfortunately. So what does it leave us with the Panasonic Eluga Tab guys? For this amount of money, just under a hundred dollars, which is eight thousand rupees and about ninety pounds, there is not much competition going on. To be honest with you, at least over here in the UK, I could have wished that they sell it in store somewhere here or at least online. But at the moment, you can buy it on Amazon India as well as Flipkart. So basically, you're getting a pretty good screen, excellent build quality, and overall feel as well as the screen is quite nice as well the volume is pretty bad unfortunately <laughs> the performance is about average the gaming performance is definitely a no-go and both of the cameras are about okay i would say above average for this price range so the important thing here is that the overall impressions that i have of this phone are very positive and the whole experience is very nice as well so Couple that with the good battery life that you're getting out of this phone. I can definitely recommend it. So yeah, thank you very much for watching my video, guys. Check my other videos as well. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for plenty more coming down. And see you in the next one. Adios.